Hi, my name is Lauren Bay and I'm a systems engineer with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. In a world run by mission critical applications requiring 100% uptime, it is paramount for your data to be readily accessible with low latencies as well as highly available and resilient in the event of a disaster. Offering the best of both worlds, I am pleased to introduce active peer persistence for the HPE Electra 9000 and HPE Primera arrays. Built on top of our existing remote copy software and proven classic peer persistence HA solution, peer, active peer persistence is going to offer a few important things. First of all, it's going to be protection of your data and applications with both a recovery point objective of zero and a recovery time objective of zero for the majority of failures that could happen in your data center. This means that in the event of a storage array disaster, there's gonna be no data loss and no application downtime, assuming that the servers themselves have not failed. Now, with the help of a third site quorum witness, automatic failover is handled quickly and transparently, protecting your key hosts and your applications from those outages. Additionally, reads and writes to your remote copy volumes can be serviced by both arrays, offering localized read performance and avoiding double round trip times on writes from remote hosts. And another important feature is that active peer persistence is gonna greatly simplify the management between your hosts and storage arrays. Virtual machines and application workloads, for example, can be migrated between replicated sites, uh, whether that's gonna be for load balancing, recovering from a host disaster, or just routine maintenance without the need for any manual intervention um, at the storage level. So no remote copy group switchovers, that sort of thing. No matter where your workloads move, they will automatically read and write to the local array, maintaining the same IO latency that they had uh, before you migrated them. So let's take a quick look at how this works. So, Replicated volumes are going to be contained inside of a remote copy group and your source volumes are going to be replicated uh, synchronously to identical target volumes on your second site. Both the source and target volumes are going to be exported up to the host with active paths. Um, so paths from the source and target volumes are managed by the arrays using a Lua. So the hosts see just one unified device in this case. Okay. Um, this management is handled completely transparently by the arrays and has no impact to your hosts. The third site quorum witness um, is uh, tracking the heartbeats of both arrays over the IP management network. Uh, this enables that automatic transparent failover between the arrays if, the, uh, if either one of them were to fail. Now, because the paths from both the source and target volumes are active, hosts can read and write to both arrays to the same volume simultaneously. Now, data integrity is always prioritized and is preserved by the primary array, which is gonna be array A in this case uh, for the group, which is responsible for handling write collisions. Um, and writes are always gonna be applied in the same order on both arrays, ensuring that the data is always identical on both of these volumes. To ensure that hosts prioritize I.O. to their co-located array, host paths are going to be identified as either active optimized or active non-optimized. And what you choose is going to depend on a new setting called host proximity, and that's going to determine basically the proximity of your host to your arrays. There's gonna be two main use cases for that, localized and symmetric. I'll go into more depth on both of those, but first I'm gonna clean up this board. Let's talk first about the localized use case. For metro or geo cluster type host environments where the hosts are distributed in separate data centers, we will want to set up a localized configuration for active peer persistence. For example, 
If we have a host and array co-located together in data center A, and a host and array co-located in data center B, we can configure the host proximity so that host A has active optimized paths to array A, and host B is gonna have active optimized paths to array B. Now, we're also going to have active non-optimized paths con uh, configured cross-site between uh, remote arrays and hosts for a uniform connectivity. Now, the hosts are gonna prefer their active optimized paths um, and are only gonna resort to these active non-optimized paths cross-site in the event that these optimized paths aren't available for any reason. So in this case, all reads and writes coming from host A are gonna be handled by array A. All the reads and writes coming from host B are gonna be handled by array B. We're gonna get a significant read performance benefit since reads are gonna be serviced locally whenever possible and not have to traverse cross-site. Writes only need to traverse the replication links between the two sites, so a write coming down from host B to array B is only gonna to have to traverse the replication links over to array A, which is going to help us avoid that double round trip uh, write penalty that we could incur in some cases with classic peer persistence configurations. So all of this is gonna greatly reduce cross-site traffic between the hosts and arrays. An additional benefit to this is that we no longer have to remove remote copy group ownership between the arrays if workloads migrate uh, to a remote host and shared data source can actually be leveraged without read and write penalties to the remote host. If we needed to vMotion a VM, for example, from host A to host B, as soon as that VM is located over on host B, all of its application I.O. is gonna be run through array B just by default. No management um, or switchovers required on the storage side from the user. Because we require uniform connectivity, meaning both arrays are accessible by all hosts in the configuration, we're highly resilient to failures on either side. A localized setup is gonna be the recommended configuration if you're unsure of what use case your solution falls under. Now, let's talk a little bit about the symmetric use case. So in a symmetric configuration, both arrays are actually gonna have active optimized paths up to the host. And this is going to mean that the host is gonna send reads and writes to both arrays. This is gonna make the most sense if your hosts and, uh, and both arrays are co-located inside of the same data center. Essentially, if you have uniform latency from the host to both arrays. Now with symmetrically configured paths, the workloads are actually gonna be uniformly balanced across the front end ports of the arrays in a round robin fashion. This is going to enable a more efficient use of those array resources without, again, having to manually load balance remote copy groups between the two arrays. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about some disaster scenarios. Just like with our classic peer persistence solution, active peer persistence is gonna offer the highest level of storage availability in the event of various hardware failures and uh, site disasters. Let's take a look at that. Now, I wanna talk about a few specific disaster scenarios and how we recover from them with active peer persistence. The first is gonna be an all pass down scenario where array A loses all of its host ports or host paths connecting it to host A and host B, all hosts in the configuration, essentially. What's gonna happen is that host A is gonna detect this failure and go ahead and trigger an automatic transparent failover of the group ownership over to array B. So we're gonna transition over to the, the group ownership over to array B. Array B is gonna become the primary for that group. This is entirely non-disruptive to the host, however. In this particular use, uh, case, host B's IO is uh, not 
interrupted it at all. It continues doing its reads and writes locally to array B per usual. In the case of host A, it just starts using the active non-optimized paths because the optimized paths are no longer available. There's no IO interruption, no application interruption here. Now, during this failure, if we've failed over to array B and the replication links stay up uh, during all of this, array B is just going to keep replicating any changes that come into this volume back over to array A. So the synchronous replication continues normally. What's nice about this use case is that as soon as those host ports come back up and array A can see all of its paths to host A and host B, those paths are gonna be immediately made available to the host. And so host A switches back to its preferred paths with uh, no intervention required. Now let's talk a little bit about what happens if all the replication links were to fail. So in this scenario, we lose all the remote copy links between array A and array B. So writes can no longer be replicated between the two arrays. What's gonna happen is the remote copy group is gonna stop. Array A being the primary for the group is going to keep its paths uh, um, active to both of the hosts in the configuration. Array B, on the other hand, is going to reject any incoming IOs, transition its paths to a Lua unavailable. So host B will now start writing over its active non-optimized links that are still available on array A. This is going to help us preserve data um, integrity on those volumes while the group is down. Since we can't replicate any changes between the two arrays, array A, or the primary for this group, is responsible for handling all of the incoming writes and reads and applying them per usual. When the replication links come back up, we're actually just going to do a delta resync of the change data that occurred while the group was down and just replicate those changes back over to array B so we don't have to do a full sync. This makes our um, recovery super smooth and easy. When the replication links come back up, the group is actually started automatically and those, um, that synchronization happens without any user uh, intervention. The next one I would like to talk about and the final one is going to be an entire array outage. In this case, we're gonna look at uh, what would happen if array A, which is the primary for this group, were to have uh, a total outage, a power fail, for example. So. If we lose array A entirely, a few things are gonna, get, are gonna go down. So we're no longer obviously gonna have paths up to the host from array A. We're also gonna lose connection, that man management IP connection to the quorum witness, and we lose the replication links between array A and array B simultaneously. The first thing that's gonna happen is array B is gonna detect that the replication links are down and is going to pull the quorum witness to see what the state of array A is. If array A hasn't updated the quorum witness, then array B is going to assume that it's down and it's dead and it's going to trigger an automatic transparent failover and it's going to take over the group ownership. So array B is now um, the primary for this group and is gonna be handling all of the IO to both hosts while array A is down. Host B is pretty much unchanged it's gonna continue sending IO down the paths that were already optimized, and it's gonna continue doing that IO locally to array B. Host A in this instance is going to start using the active opt uh, non-optimized paths that are still available going to array B. Um, and so we'll not actually experience any kind of application outage or disruption on either host because we still have uh, uh, active paths from both hosts to array B. Now recovery is very simple from an array outage. So when array A is powering back up, these replication links are going to come back up. And just like we did over here with the replication link failure scenario, as soon as those RC links are back up and, and available, the remote copy group is going to go ahead and start. Any 
changes that came into the volumes uh, while array B was the primary and array A was down are going to be uh, synchronously replicated over to array A. And so we're not, again, not doing a full sync. It's only changes that occurred while array A was down and the group was stopped. As soon as that happens, array A goes ahead and makes its paths available again. And without any intervention required, host A is just gonna start using its preferred paths, the local paths down to array A because they are now available. So as you can see, active peer persistence offers high availability for your most critical applications as well as localized performance and can really simplify the management of your storage and how your storage interacts with your host environments. With flexibility and interoperability between HP Primera and HP Electra 9000, as well as your existing remote copy environments, active peer persistence can be smoothly integrated into your existing data centers. Your existing classic peer persistence groups can also be converted online with just a simple policy change. And those host proximity settings I talked about can be configured and changed non-disruptively. At this time, active peer persistence is supported with VMware, Windows, Linux, HP UX, SUSE, and AIX. All OSs supported with classic peer persistence will ultimately be supported with active peer persistence. Please check the latest HP Electra 9000 and HP Primera support matrices for any additional configuration and support considerations.